Hi, everyone. Um, this is a small segment all about masks. So we have Mike Cheney here, um, who will tell us a little bit about who he is and what he does and why he's on this expert video all about masks. Welcome, Mike. Thanks. Glad to be here. So I'm Mike Cheney, and I am a respiratory therapist. I'm a graduate of the Cincinnati State Program uh, in respiratory care, and I've been a respiratory therapist for about 27 years. Uh, I'm currently the program chair of the program at Cincinnati State, um, but I also still work at the hospital one day a week. I work every Wednesday evening in the hospital, uh, so I worked last night, and um, uh, very often I'm assigned to the COVID ventilator unit, so uh, I get to get to take care of these folks. So current practitioner, uh, well-read, 27 years, that's a long time. So I'm really glad that you took the time to talk to us today. I feel confident that you're going to help us out. So let's jump right in. Uh, we're going to show you different types of masks today. Uh, of course, the Cincinnati State Guidelines require that you do wear a, a mask face covering from your nose through your chin, so this entire area needs to be covered. Um, when you are on campus in buildings and in garages, and certainly for those of you that are teaching face-to-face -face and those that are coming to campus, um, this is for you. But everything that we're learning here today um, can count as you go out in general. Um, so let's go, let's get right to it. So we're gonna start with a regular cloth mask. Now this was made for me um, by a friend. And what they've done is just created um, an elastic band here at the top, there is um, a piece that will hug my nose inside that's a little bit stiffer. It's not metal in there, but it's something like that. So when I go to put my mask on, um, I've washed my hands first um, and I'm, I'm not touching my face. Um, my mask has been sterilized or laundered. And I'm, again, I'm being careful not to touch too many places. I'm gonna just work on the loops. Now my head is really small. <laughs> So we're going to probably make some jokes about that as we go along and I have to do some things, but so it I'm going to take a large brain, right? <laughs> right. That's right. How's a large brain. Thank you. Right. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to start by doing this and I notice how I'm just touching the elastic band. Now for me, because my head is small, you see my hair is in a bun. I actually put it up above there and then I do the adjustment on the outside of the mask and push this in on my nose. At this point, I have it above and below my ear and I can talk freely. I don't feel like I'm encumbered, but the sides of my, of my mask are tightly cinched where that elastic is and I have it completely on my chin. Now for many people, it won't go down this far. Again, small head, right? So I probably need a, a child size mask. So Mike, did I put this on properly? And what can you tell me about this cloth mask? Yeah, so um, it's definitely on properly. I'll tell you one thing I really like um, that not all masks have, but but yours does, is that metal strip uh, that you can make it conform to your nose. And that's especially good for people that wear glasses. Because- right. that was another yeah, thing that is helpful like for me. Yeah, so you can actually get a better seal because what happens when you breathe out is your uh, exhaled air which is moist, you know, if you, if you, you know, blow into a window, there's moisture on there. Um, you can see, I get a little bit on my glasses, but not very much. But part of that has to do with my glasses lay low on my nose. If yeah. I had glasses, again, I have a small head, so that, you know, whatever. If my glasses were tighter up here, it would, it would be so bad. Yeah. So if you, if you have that metal strip, you can actually make sure that it's fitting more snugly so that you don't get your glasses steamed up. Yeah, yeah. And the, the other thing is, you know, you may have some loose, um, you know, gaps on the side here, but that's okay for this kind of mask. You can see there, and, you know, with some of the other masks, they're very loose fitting. But if we think about what the mask mandate is for, it's really to protect other people from you because when we talk, uh, you know, little sprays of, you know, droplets come out that can potentially be infected with the COVID virus. Now, you might think, well, if I'm not sick, then I don't need to wear the mask. And I would say that you don't know if you've been exposed because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't feel sick, they don't have any symptoms, but they are contagious. And so yeah. this mask really protects others from you. And so you know, when you breathe in, 
it's okay, or out there, if there's little gaps on this kind of mask, because all we're interested in is the exit droplets from you. Yeah, and you know, with this mask too, I've got some space in here, so I don't feel like I'm constricted when I'm talking or breathing. I think personally, being a susceptible population, I wouldn't want to be running around in this mask, like in a marathon. I know people do it, um, but that wouldn't really be for me. We're going to be doing a lot of talking as faculty too, so you got to be comfortable with what you're wearing. One other thing I, I would mention is th this one, it doesn't seem to hurt my nose. I know some of the other ones are um, can cause some bumps and stuff there, but this this doesn't do that for me. And I also feel comfortable that I'm not exposing other people, just as you mentioned, and, and that's the purpose of this type of mask anyway. Now I'm touching right. it. That's a no-no. <laughs> and and I will mention too, you know, you know, with the moisture that you exhale, you know, it can get a little humid in there sometimes, but you don't have to worry about, you know, gas air not being able to flow through there, not being able yeah. to get rid of your carbon dioxide or bring oxygen in. All that stuff passes through because it's so small. Yeah, I just feel like I'm getting a special facial. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I'm just breathing in my own breath. So I make sure I've got fresh breath, which I know you've mentioned in our other video. Okay, right. so I'm going to go ahead and take this one off. Now, if I were taking this off in a classroom, again, I would wash and or sterilize my hands before I did this. Um, when I take it off, I just pull it out and over and it flips really easy into this where it's, it's completely in half. And then at this point, I will put it in my pocket or I'll put it in a bag in my pocket. Um, certainly I'm going to launder or sterilize this every night. Um, and I'm not going to lay it down on my desk or my computer. Um, because the purpose of that isn't good. I'm going to pick up what's ever around. Right. I mean, I want to be thoughtful about, I might put this back on after I'm done eating or drinking. Um, and I want to make sure I I'm still protecting people. And you may pick up something that it was laying on or, or drop something off either way. Yeah. Spread. Yeah. Well, I have a few other masks to show you. So this is all that's required at Sensei State. And um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit later about some of the ones that you have as well. Um, I am in a susceptible population. So I'm going to move over to talk about, I have these very small filters that I was able to purchase that are my, two and a half micron. Some of these cloth masks that people are making are designed with little pouches in them that allows you to put this filter inside. And on this one, on the inside, it's got that little pouch. If I want to, I can put that filter the inside that just covers um, this part for me. Um, and so these are available. It, it, it's up to you what you want to do. Again, I'm in a susceptible population. So I'm really um, made sure that I had some options. Plus, I also wanted to be able to demo these things for everybody from the CTL. So I'm going to move over to this one. So this one, um, I really like this mask and I got it for about 10 bucks. So it's, it's kind of like a, um, a neoprene and it's got these two little aerators on it. It has clear metal, um, not uh, just a, a tighter elastic, like that other one's not quite metal. Um, so this is a real tight seal on the nose. I also like it because remember I have a small head. So it's got Velcro on the back. So I don't have to do that weird over my bun thing and all that extra stuff. Um, and then inside it does have a filter, which is replaceable. And when you buy these, it comes with the, the replaceable filters. Usually they come five or 10 uh, with, with the purchase of this. This was uh, $10 for me um, to purchase this. These little vents, you open them just to replace this um, filter and then you close them back up. And they're, I think they're generally open, um, but they're one-way valves. Um, so it also does help with my, um, with my glasses too. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on. Now again, just like anything else, I would sterilize or wash my hands first. Just like the other piece, I'm going to grab it from the edges. I'm not gonna touch the, the side. I'm gonna put it on my chin, around my face, Oops, I just lost one of these little things. And then I'm going to make sure that it's tight. You can see it down here. Now, I really like this because I got that the little ears, and this feels real snug to me. I also find it really easy to talk through this because of these valves. Um, and I don't know if that's psychosomatic or if that's a legit thing. Um, and then when I wear my glasses with this mask, I even have less, I have almost no fogginess whatsoever. 
And I know that they, um, they sell these for athletes and that's where, where I got it from. One thing I will say is that I usually have to pull my earrings out because they hurt <laughs> when they're in there. So a little note to that. Um, but yeah, I feel really comfortable with this mask and I like the idea that I can change these. I don't know what the microns are of these. I don't think it's protecting me. Again, it's for me protecting others. Isn't that right, Mike? Yeah. And one thing about, you know, that mask is uh, you don't have the straps. Now, one thing to remember, and, and I can tell you because I have to wear a mask a lot of times for eight hours straight at the hospital, what can start off comfortable can over time become uncomfortable. So, um, you know, if you do have the means to get one of these, um, the neoprene is very comfortable. You don't have the straps, you know, putting pressure in one spot. And so uh, I, I like that. And the Velcro, like you said, makes it a, very adjustable for you. Yeah, and I also do not feel super restrained in here. If you can see from the side that it kind of comes out like this because of the nose piece. So I feel like I have plenty of room in there um, to breathe and talk. I mean, I know I look a little silly. One of the things I'll mention is um, that, you know, again, that just not to get complacent, um, I, I shouldn't do this if I'm not washing my hands and I'm gonna be careful putting it on, taking it off. Um, you know, the other thing about this mask that I really like is, and I'll show you when I take it off, is when it folds, it, because of the nose piece, it really folds shut. Um, more so than this one. So I actually feel a little bit better about being able to put this in my pocket and then put it back on um, than I do this one. It's a personal preference, but I actually feel more comfortable with this mask on, to be quite frank. Um, I also will say that um, I don't have the fogginess, like I mentioned, but this metal piece can hurt your nose after a time. Um, and so, you know, it's not a bad idea to put some cushioning on the inside. Um, if you'd like to do that. So when I take it off again, I'm just going to pull it like this and it just folds so nice. It's really easy to just put this back. Uh, one thing I will say is that you can hear me better through the cloth mask than you can the neoprene a little, um, but I'm kind of a loud talker anyway. So just keep that in mind. So anything I did right or wrong with this one that you, that you want to mention? No, I mean, you were touching it because you were demoing it but yeah. yeah just always remember that you know not to touch it um no it looked good and, and the earrings were a really nice touch oh thank you i appreciate that <laughs> um also this is not a washable mask necessarily but if you take the filter out it is and that makes this nice because you can launder this you can take out these valves and you can launder this i wouldn't put it in the washing machine i would wash it um with you know with soap and water in your sink um, but yeah, and then I tend to lay mine out to sterilize in the sun and UV light. Okay, so the last one that I have, and then we're going to move to you, is, is because I am in a susceptible population after speaking with my doctor, um, I do have an N95 mask. Now, mine is a small because my face is small. So um, I'm going to use the same procedure that I would with anything else. Now, I wear this when I'm trying to protect myself, recognizing, I think, and I'm going to have you tell us it's not 100%, but it does provide me, I think, a, an additional layer of protection for myself. I'm still protecting others, but I do have um, at least this size of 2.4 2 microns. And 99s are 4.4, so, you know, something to keep in mind if we talk about size. All right, so same thing, wash my hands, sterilize. This one's a little different because it kind of stays closed, so I do a thing like this, which is really funny with my chin. And then I kind of push it up. And I don't normally do it that badly. I usually set up. Same nose things. Now for me, again, I got to put this over my bun because it doesn't fit. Now I look like a duck, but you can see I'm clearly covered here, here, and here. And so let's talk a little bit about, and there's a lot of space in here for me to breathe. I mean, I would want to, I want to decorate this as a duck bill or something. But anyway, all right, Mike, so tell me about this uh, N95 mask. Yeah, so this one is a higher level um, of mask that, as you said, per, not only protects others from you, but also now this one will protect you from others when you breathe in, if it's put on properly. So you want to make sure that there's no gaps. This one, it is important there's no gaps. You can see there, um, and the CDC recommends that you don't 
crisscross those straps. You have it on properly. So the top one is on the top of the bun and the bottom one is on the bottom and they're not crisscrossed. Um, and then you have the nose piece uh, nice and tight. And so that offers a higher level of protection for yeah. you. So yeah, it looks good. So this does feel different because it is a higher level of protection. So I get warmer inside of this mask. I don't personally feel any different in terms of breathing. I know that my air is, my CO2 is coming out. I know I'm getting oxygen in. I don't have any fear of that. And I actually like this space, believe it or not. It creates some um, distance for me from a mental perspective that it's not right on my face like this one is. Um, but it does right. get hot in here, um, as you know, right? Because you're wearing these. Um, and I, you know, I don't know why, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, if I should be doing something with this little no. thing, but this is just how it works because that's no. how they make them. So yeah, they do make N95s that aren't duckbill. Um, but like you said, it does pull it away from your face a little bit. And in the N95, the, the 95 means that it filters out 95% of the particles. Right. Uh, and, and, the, and that uh, size, I think is 2.4, isn't it? Microns? Yeah, something like that. And the N99s, so, I think, are 4.4. Yeah, and that's if it's worn properly. So right. not below the nose, no gaps, nothing like yeah. that. Um, now, when I, I wear say, this one, I don't get a lot of... Um, uh, the fogging? I don't. The one that, yeah. that that's the worst with is this one, of course. Yeah. Because it's more flexible. Yeah. I've it's also perfect. worn this a lot, so it's pretty, it's, you know, it's well used. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I actually feel really, really comfortable in this um, for two reasons. Good. One, I'm in a susceptible population. I'm happy to have it. Um, and two, I feel as though I'm doing my part, but also I, I feel a little safer um, in doing my job, you know, when, I'm, when I have things I need to do. Now with this one yeah. though, I can't launder this. So right. even though I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna take it off in the same way that I would take anything off, and this one collapses so fast and easy. So I actually purchased on Amazon a box that is a UV sterilizing box for 25 bucks. And it takes three to five minutes, but I can sterilize my phone, my keys, whatever I want, and my mask fits right in there. Yeah. And so that's what I use to clean this. So it's, tech, it's reusable for me. It's reusable anyway, but I can't really wash this. So what would you recommend um, for people those that have or chosen to have these to use them, what would you recommend for that? Yeah, well, I have to make my disclaimer in that historically before COVID and, and you know, these were on potentially short supply, they, those were single patient use. Yeah. So they were, you use once, you throw away. That has changed because we have to conserve the resources. But, um, you know, what I wouldn't do is stuff it in a bag and leave it there. Right. Um, you know, you want to let it air out higher temperatures, you know, you could, you know, put it in the sun or uh, mm -hmm. I, I've not seen anything that says how long it has to sit in the sun. But, you know, given the choice of sticking it in a bag versus putting it outside, you know, you, you can certainly do that. Yeah. Um, to clean it. The other yeah, thing like I'm I said, I, I like that UV sterilizer that I have. It's inexpensive. It takes a lot longer than the hospital ones, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, I'm willing to wait for five minutes um, to, and I leave it in there until I'm ready to leave. Um, you know, I don't, I, I turn, it turns off, but I don't open the lid and take it with me until I'm ready to use it, um, which yeah. also, you know, is kind I of one of those. One at the hospital. I use one at the hospital that, that it takes 45 seconds. And I put my phone, my keys, my pens, my mask in there. Yeah. Um, I will say one other thing about the N95. Um, it is a tighter, it, it's tighter, it, like the, the, the fibers are closer together. Um, so it does not let as much of the humidity out. Now, what you're going to find is that, again, back to, you know, you might be in class for an hour or two or, you know, on campus for several hours. And so what you're going to notice, which is different than just running to the store, is that that, that humidity, that fog, is going to build up in there and you might get a runny nose. And I, I, when I wear one at the hospital, my nose always just runs. So I'll say two things to that. I point that out one, because I don't want you to think you're having an allergy. Um, it's just, 
you know, the, the, you're rebreathing your own moisture and humidity. And so it just kind of comes out. And, and the other thing is that it doesn't really matter what you look like because nobody can see your nose run under it anyway. So just right. don't worry about it. Clean it up later. <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay, so <laughs> the last one are the medical masks. And I don't have one of those, but you do. So let's, do. let's talk about that a little bit. Okay, so this is um, a medical mask or surgical mask, and it's got, you know, the pleated, uh, so you can open it up. These are single use uh, in terms of you can't rewash them. You could put them in a UV sterilizer, although I will say the UV sterilizer, um, after a few times, it will break this down a little bit. Um, the other thing is, is that for, for men, if you are whiskery, uh, you know, and you get a little whiskery through the day, the whiskers will tend to kind of fray this and make it, you know, fluffy. And then sometimes you inhale, you know, the little, it, it gets, yeah. So, um, you know, it kind of gets tickly or, or whatever, but um, these are great. You can, you know, get a box of these. I don't, I don't know how much they are anymore, but um, they're not that expensive. Yeah. But this has a little metal piece in there and you just fit it on your nose, loop it over your ears. And again, you want to adjust it so it doesn't fog your glasses if you wear glasses. And then this is the reason for the pleats is just to pull it down there. Again, this one doesn't have to be really tight. It's okay if there's gaps because this is not meant to protect you from the virus inhaling. This is to protect other people from droplets coming out of your mouth. And so it's very lightweight, it's comfortable. Um, your voice doesn't sound quite as muffled because it is really thin. Uh, the only downside other than the fact of what I've mentioned is that, you know, it can kind of pill up a little bit inside and, and uh, um, I forget what the other thing I said was. Oh, it's, uh, it's not washable. Right. Is that over a couple hours, your ears will get sore. Mm -hmm. So um, one, if you wear glasses, you kind of get used to it a little better. I think our ears get a little tough in there, but I'll tell you what some people do. Um, and, and it's become kind of a fashion thing is to have a little headband and then they sew a button on there. Yeah. Yeah. I've and, also seen people use, um, these binder clips on their glasses and, and you loop it around that. Um, I, I there's also a little thing you, with a paper clip that you can slip on your glasses to hold it too, which is, which is really, yeah, they have different things. Um, but if you just have a little cloth headband and sew a button on the side, and and I'll tell you, people get really creative. I mean, these are these, these have become like a fashion statement. Then you just hang it on the button, and it's not on your ear anymore. So again, to take this off, same as what Julie's been doing. You just want to do that. What you don't want to do is this all day long, right? You know, like, and and I it cracks me up because I see people they'll walk up to talk to somebody when is it's at the highest risk. And they'll go, oh, l l let's talk for a minute, right? And it's, you know, now it's not serving its purpose. Um, so there you go. Yeah. Now I've seen people when I'm out wearing those too, where it kind of falls down, even their cloth masks will sort of fall down. And then just as a reminder, you know, since A-State's guidelines, CDC guidelines are, you have to cover, if it's respiratory, you have to cover all of this. Yeah. Um, you have to cover this whole area. Yeah. So the other one I have, um, we got a pack of 10 of these at Myers. It's made out of t-shirt material. Very comfortable, very loose fitting. But again, this isn't to protect me. It's to protect other people from secretions. And again, remember, you can be contagious without feeling sick. Um, but this is t-shirt material. You throw it in the laundry. You could soak it in a bleach solution if you want. Um, and then just same way. Now, this is really comfortable. This is really comfortable in my ears, very loose fitting, so I don't feel claustrophobic. This one steams my glasses, though, if I don't. Sometimes I got to play with it a little bit because it's not real snug. But it serves the purpose. It's washable uh, and not very expensive. You know, let's talk about that bleach solution for a second because, um, you know, the one thing about bleach is that a very diluted bleach solution, as soon as it dries, the chemical 
for the bleach is gone. It evaporates. And so there's a real positive to that. Um, but again, you know, laundering is just no different than using soap on your hands. I mean, it's mechanical and antibacterial and antiviral. So, you know, that works. But I will say that, you know, we have to be cognizant of that. We've been talking mostly about us, the facilitators and the instructors, but our students are wearing masks too. And they're required um, in their personal statement to wear a cloth mask as we've been talking about them. But, you know, we're talking about some level of expense, you know, $10 here. I think they can go as high as 25, but I bought the $10 one. Um, you know, the N95s are going to be really hard to find. Um, if you're a susceptible population person, maybe reach out to me and I can give you some avenues for that. Um, these are, are, are anywhere from free to $5 to $10, depending on where you're getting them, or you can make your own. But even if you can't do that, that Meyer mask that you had, I'm sure you all have seen these on um, YouTube. You take a sock, right? And you fold it in half and you cut it this way so it's square, just like your Meyer mask. You can even be creative of making it uh, with the angles. And then once that's cut, you just, cut it so it's not all the way to the edge and that will create that loop for you. Now, this is okay. Um, bandana is okay. Um, the, using the things that we use in the winter time, um, I forget what they're called, but you know, that people, ski people wear, that's just cloth, it's okay. We have to understand that our students may not be able to purchase these things and we have to be empathetic to that. So if they're following the guidelines and they're wearing a cloth mask, which is what they're required to do, um, it may be a sock and we should be prepared for that because I think, like you said, people are going to get creative. Yeah, we were, um, my wife and I were in um, New Orleans a couple of weeks ago. We ran down there to eat some good food and see some sights and uh, on, we were riding the trolley and they had a video playing and I wish I could remember how to do it. We, we saw it a, a ton of times and they were showing how to make uh, a mask out of a bandana and it wasn't like the cowboy style, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it, it looked like a legit mask and how you fold it. It's really easy. You could probably, you could probably, you know, look These things are on YouTube. I encourage people to go and take a look. Now, I do know that we've been talking about providing, um, potentially providing masks for both uh, fac cloth masks for faculty and students um, at Cincinnati State, and that's in the works. But until then, um, I think we've done a pretty good job of looking at the different types of masks. So, Mike, any last minute things about, about this that you want to share with people? Um, I guess the last thing I'd, I'd say is, you know, if you're not wearing your mask properly, if you're not being you know, conscious about where you're putting it, how you're wearing it, um, and how you're cleaning it, then it's really not going to serve its purpose. Yeah. And, um, you know, you might not be worried about getting COVID because you're not in a high risk population. But really, again, the mask is about not transmitting it to those who are in a high risk population. Right. So, you know, even if you don't want to wear it for yourself, you know, wear it for other people. And I would just add to that, you know, part of feeling more comfortable is this becomes a normal thing if we have an intentional plan in place. Like I know this, I put my mask on, it's how I take it off, it's what I do. You know, 21 days makes a habit. So if we do something consistently for that amount of time, um, it just becomes something that we do. And I think we are modeling for our students and that's really important to mention. And also maintaining perspective, right? Um, you know, and I thank you so much for your time today. Um, we're gonna continue on with our workshop. This uh, video will be posted on the COVID-19 faculty resource site on Blackboard. Anybody that has any specific questions about masks that we didn't cover here today, if you'd like to email me, I'm positive that Mike might be willing to either do another video with me um, and to ask, answer those questions directly. Um, and you're also welcome to office hours uh, with me. So Mike, thanks so much for your time and I really appreciate it. So everyone, this is all about masks. Here we go.